Hi, listeners. A huge thank you to everyone who filled out our online survey. It's really incredible to have so much personal information about our listeners. From the data we collected, we were able to narrow down some products that will be a great fit for your lifestyle. Killjoy is brought to you by Z Club. Z Club's innovative subscription model takes that work out of the equation by delivering a fresh mattress to your home once a year at an amazing price. The only work you have to do? Dispose of your old mattress. But wait, with Z Club, it's simple. Each Z Club mattress is handmade from 100% polyester and is highly flammable. All you need is a large, fireproof space like a car park or an empty swimming pool. And get this all Z Club mattresses are pre treated in an atmosphere dispersant biodegradable petrochemical fire accelerant. So all you need is a match. Z Club, sleep your way to success. If you've been listening to this podcast, you'll know a couple of things. And if you haven't, here's a recap. On a cold night in 1987, a couple spend their Friday night enjoying a drink with their friends at their local cozy tavern. Hours later, one of them is dead. Her name, Joy Ford. In this episode, I pay a visit to the house where the crime happened. And lucky for me, it's being restored back to how it was on the night of Joy's murder. You're listening to Killjoy. I'm Amy Upright. Chapter 3, Heidi Mai to the Murder House. Tabby Delaney and Joy Ford went to school together. They both competed in local beauty pageants from junior high, right up until Joy's untimely death. Tabby never won, always awarded the Forestry and Agriculture Participation Certificate. Tabby was drawn to Joy's case, but not in a way you'd expect. This is a clip from an Australian TV show from the 80s called Spiritual Discoveries. I'm getting... I'm getting a, a car... A Toyota. Oh, she's... She's telling me not to drive it. Joy owned a Toyota Celica Supra XX. Oh. The man, he has a, has a mullet and a, and a moustache. I'm getting a... I'm getting a J letter. No, 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 a G, a G letter. G is the first letter in Gary's name. Gary was Joy's husband. He was accused of her murder. He didn't have a moustache, but several of his close friends mentioned that he was thinking of growing one. <sighs> yep. Yep, this is it. Yeah, this is the spot. For the first time in televised history, our psychic finds the missing ingredient to this murder cocktail. The remains of Joy Ford. Amy. Hi. Come in. Mwah. Mwah. Just take your shoes off. We had the floor redone and I don't want to get scuff marks on oh. the Remu. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tabby has restored Joy and Gary's home to what it was like on the night of Joy's murder. And I have to say, I'm impressed. Considering her budget, she's done a remarkable job. The blood smearing on the floor and walls is so realistic, oh, it makes through. me feel sick. Ha! <sighs> so this is where it all happened. And so how did everyone respond when you turned Joy and Gary's home into a museum? The town is very proud of the museum. You could say it's a bit of a tourist hot pot. <laughs> Yeah. You see Tabby meant to say hot spot. The house did not offer any traditional Chinese cuisine. And it provides a lot of jobs for the community. If we didn't have the murder house, then the town would be a barren wasteland. <laughs> Tabby is right. If it weren't for this tacky museum, there would be nothing to do in this town and no reason for this mediocre place to exist. 
I felt compelled to write off the museum as some sociopath's sick way of profiting from her so-called friend's murder. And then I realized, maybe Joy did want this. From what I gathered, she did love attention. I guess that's why she entered so many beauty pageants. A family arrives for the tour, and Tabby begins to lead the way. Okay, everyone. Thank you all for being here. This is a retelling of the actual events of the night of Joy's murder back in 1987. Tabby runs over and grabs a knife out of the kitchen drawer. It looks as if she's tackling herself, her arms on her shoulders. It's like a weird interpretive dance wrestle. I'm unsure why she put so much effort into this one woman show. Maybe for her friend Joy? Tabby flails around on the ground and she begins to pretend to stab herself. After her crying fit is Gary, she gets up and talks to the family. Joy Ann Ford died at 7 p.m. at the ripe age of 32. Gary takes her body to the creek. There he ignites her remains. He returns to the house and reports the murder to the police. Thank you. While Tabby collects herself, I ask the dad who was on the tour with his young children a few questions. Uh, yeah, I remember coming here as a teenager with my family when it first opened. Mm -hmm. And um, so the thought of bringing the kids here uh, when they're old enough, <laughs> you know, I think, well, the eldest, she's obsessed with true crime. Yeah, and how old are your kids? Um, well, my daughter's seven and um, the little one's just about to start kindergarten. He's three. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so they don't find it scary at all? Uh, well, th th this, is, this is nothing compared to, say, how they feel about climate change or, you know, I think that's terrifying for this generation. It's, it's something they, um, well, they have nightmares about, you know. I think, I, think, I think they are truly terrified about the world they're going to inherit. I have to admit, there was a part of me that wondered, was Tabby really a clairvoyant? And if she was, then why didn't she recreate the part where Gary slipped over in Joy's blood? When the family leaves, I ask Tabby more questions. So how does Gary feel about all this? The performance where you pretend to be him and theatrically kill his wife in his actual home? Look, Gary has moved on with his life. He has his people, and we're not part of that community. What do you mean by people? He didn't tell you. He didn't tell me what. About them? About who? On the next Killjoy, I uncover Gary's other life.